So I'm concerned for Kathy Woods. I know that sounds weird, but Kathy Woods is one of the founders and portfolio managers for ARK Investments. And ARK Investments and Kathy Woods have been in the press a ton here recently uh, because of their mixture of mutual funds and ETFs and what they're focused on. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on why now may not be the greatest time to buy into ARK Investments. So a uh, ETF or mutual fund um, like ARK Investments, I believe she started out initially with about 40 million in assets under management and today is well, well, well over a billion in assets in each ETF. And with a ETF or a mutual fund, when they get new money from you and I, the investors, they have to put, deploy that money and put it to work based on whatever their investment um, policy statement states. So if it says we're gonna hold 10% uh, in cash, then they have to hold 10% in cash at all times. And they can then allocate their portfolios to the different investments. Now, the cool thing about these kind of funds, the specialty funds like Kathy Wood's uh, company's ETFs and, and funds are, is that they're specialized funds. And in the last 12 months, those type of funds, um, internet-based funds, uh, genomic-based uh, funds, um, you know, the revolutionary type funds have just exploded and done incredibly well. But the challenge is when you go from 100, 200 million in assets under management and all of a sudden you're up into the billions per fund, you have to put that money to work. And that can actually be hard to do. And that's why you see companies like you know, the Fidelity Magellan Fund, who was run by Peter Lynch at one time. His fund was gigantic, uh, great returns year over year. But if you got in at the wrong time, you may not get those great returns. And the reason is, is because those funds have to go deploy that money to those stocks they own. So when they allocate, if they have a 30 position holding uh, 30 positions in their portfolio, they're allocating millions and in billions of dollars to those, uh, f to those companies, which can artificially drive those companies up in price. And if you've been on that bandwagon since a year ago, well, yeah, that's been great. But the problem is, is when you basically over allocate to a uh, to a company, like let's say one of their biggest holdings is Tesla, and Tesla's valuations don't meet your criteria, you have to go find other companies to buy. And in the areas and sectors that they're buying in, well, there's not a whole lot of great companies to buy. And so then you start to have to buy the companies you're buying now but maybe you're buying on the high side and you'd rather buy on the low side and you don't believe that their allocation is going or their uh, performance is going to be all that great. So you run into a challenge with growing your investment, your, your book of business. So in her case, she's in the billion, multi-billion range. How many more good companies can she find? How many good companies out there in the next 12 months are going to be revolutionary? Or are there more bad ones than good ones? And this is where this parabolic move in ARK Investments money, you know, money flow into the company really causes concern to me. And more importantly, it causes concern of the underlying top 10 companies that they're buying. Are they artificially pumped up. Are they really great companies or is just the stock price just been pushed up over the last 12, 24 months? Is it actually something you want to own in your book of business? And I got to believe they're running into that wall of, you know, 
I mean, think about it. Tesla's a 1300 PE ratio. That's pretty rich. That means they've, I mean, they got a chunk of change in that company. Doesn't mean that they won't double or price or Tesla will keep going, but at some point it gets hard for them to reorganize their portfolio and rebalance. So I remember in 2000, or excuse me, 1998, and the, the dot-com explosion, and everybody was buying the Cisco's, the Microsoft's, uh, the Amazon's of the world. And these large cap growth companies were starting to do what they call style drift. Instead of buying just large cap growth companies, they started buying mid cap growth companies and small cap growth companies because they had a run they ran out of where they could go buy good companies and they got over allocated in some of the bigger companies so they would style drift down well when the dot com bubble exploded and blew up those funds had a hard time selling because you think about it if you've got say i don't know 500 million or a billion dollars worth of a stock or a company and Joe over here is the only person you could probably sell it to because he's got the money to buy that kind of thing but he owns that kind of size company well then all of a sudden you run out of buyers and when you run out of buyers all of a sudden the bid ask spread widens and that's when during the dot-com bubble we saw that fall in a lot of big large cap growth com uh, mutual funds and i suspect uh, we will, should expect that kind of event to happen in the world that we're in now and with companies like arc who and please understand the concept and what they're doing and how they're investing I totally believe in it is revolutionary businesses that are going to change our world. They're going to make my life longer and better quality. The challenge is, how are they going to allocate more billions and billions and dollars of more, more money to these companies that just valuation-wise and fundamentally just don't add up anymore? And when one breaks, and if we see some level of a market downturn, a retracement, and they have to re and redemptions start coming out of those funds, you're going to see an exponential drop in the underlying in individual investments because they have to raise cash. They have to rebalance their portfolios. And when you're rebalancing and you've got 12% of your you know, holdings in one of your funds to, uh, say, a Tesla, and all of a sudden you have redemptions out of that fund, well, and everybody's selling Tesla, your bid ask price spread starts to widen and it gets harder and harder to to sell those positions which means when they revalue that that's that etf at the end of the day those valuations your value etf may be you know say hypothetically for fifty dollars in the next morning because the underlying valuations are lower than 50 your nav net asset value at the next day maybe $43. Well, that's a pretty big drop from the close of business to the next morning. And you see that happen in these funds that are derivative based. Well, my concern, and I totally, my hat's off to Kathy Woods and her vision for ARK Investments and what is she's doing. My concern is the continue asset flows into their companies. I mean, I was just looking at one of their ETFs today and it was up 6% today. I haven't seen those kind of moves since, well, 1999 and during the dot-com bubble. So my whole point of telling you all this is once you understand flows in inflows and outflows within products like mutual funds, ETFs, or index funds, passive index funds, you start to understand there's a dynamic, underlying dynamic that could really affect stock prices of these companies, but also your holdings in these funds. And it could be very detrimental. I mean, the worst thing you want to see is this cascade selling of your underlying investments in the fund you own and you get wiped out. 
and that happened. It happened during the dot-com bust. It happened in the housing. It's happened a lot. But understanding what you're owning and understanding the parabolic moves don't last. They will retrace. I mean, it's just healthy. We're due for at least a 10% retracement. I mean, at some point, it just keeps going up. Who knows if it's going to happen anytime soon? I'm not a market predictor. This is not advice. This is education, in my opinion only. You make the decisions best for you. But when you get excited and emotional, as I've seen here recently, check your emotions at the door, recalibrate, and ask the question, why am I wrong? And if you can't figure out why you're wrong, maybe you're right. But if you start to see cracks in the foundation, keep exploring and risk manage properly.